It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the Monday, October 31st edition of the show. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. Let me go on and start off and let you know that the show is brought to you each and every time out by BetUS. It is America's premier online sports book, and you can find them at BetUS.com. I, of course, host the BetUS College Football Show. You can find that on YouTube, really, or on the podcast or whatever, but the BetUS College Football Show every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. we got to talk about what's going on at Auburn. we got a lot of things to discuss, so uh, hopefully everything is sounding good. We've got a different mic that we're using today, but regardless. Uh, Brian Harson fired at Auburn. He is, and this was expected for quite some time. Obviously, when Alan Green was uh, not retained as the athletic director, um, he uh, was the first to go, and then, of course, Harson was going to go next. Harson was never who the Auburn faithful, the Auburn bunch, wanted hired in the first place. They wanted to hire Kevin Steele. Alan Green, the athletic director at the time, brought in his own guy. He went outside and brought in the Boise State head coach, and things have Definitely not gone well. 9-12 and 12 is his record as the head coach at Auburn University. Uh, right now, Carnell Cadillac Williams is going to be the interim coach. Of course, it was the running back in the early 2000s at Auburn. I believe Tommy Tuberville days, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, but yeah, the buyout for Brian Harson, a little over $15 million. Half of that is guaranteed within 30 days. It, it, this is a weird time to be firing a football coach, right? And if you listen to Stephen Godfrey and the Split Zone Duo guys, they would have told you this a long time ago, that they were always going to fire Harson before they bring in the AD. So they figured out the AD situation. They're bringing in John Cohen. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. But they figure out the AD situation, and then they go ahead and notice in the press release, it is stated specifically that the school president is who fired Brian Harson? So they went ahead and let him know. Uh, Justin Hawkinson, I think, is one of the beat writers for Auburn. Um, and he put out on Twitter that he was supposed to have a meeting with Harson because Harson didn't like something that he wrote over the weekend. Uh, but it was supposed to be at about noon. He was headed to the meeting, and the news dropped about them firing Harson. So uh, very interesting situation here. Uh, the amount of money that Auburn is giving out in buyouts between the $5 million that they paid Kevin Steele, the $15 million that they are paying Brian Harson, the 21 plus whatever million that they gave Gus Malzahn, along with, of course, all the staff buyouts, etc., that is more money than each Big 12 team is going to bring in in a season. That is crazy to think about. Just the amount of money that is going out there. We knew this was going to happen. This was the recruiting situation for one, but the fact that it was somebody that the boosters at Auburn never really wanted to begin with. So this is not surprising in the least. Uh, again, we'll talk about the AD situation in just a little bit, but at this point, we've already kind of got our list together of what we think Auburn is going to do. But the situation is, it's all tied in with the AD. Are they going to let him run his own search, or? Are the boosters going to run this thing? And that's where it all gets kind of complicated. Let's go ahead and talk first about the different candidates that have been put out there. First off, Hugh Freeze, one of the top names that's been put out there. He is, of course, the head coach at Liberty. He was the head coach at Ole Miss. Uh, Scandal derailed that uh, that job, that era, etc. So obviously things didn't go very, very well there at the end. But Hugh Freeze has shown he can recruit and he knows how to beat Nick Saban. And that's something that Auburn's going to look for. It's somebody that has a lot of SEC ties. Does Hugh Freeze want to leave what he's got at Liberty? Maybe. Uh, If you look at what was going on with the Liberty contract extension that he just got last week, uh, there is a quick statement in there that Parker at Sats of War went and dug up that the buyout is Power 5 friendly. 
So really, this was an extension that may have just been done so that when Hugh takes his next job, Liberty is going to get a bundle of cash. And if Hugh Freeze decides to stay there, which I personally think he should, he's going to be well compensated regardless. Does he want to go up to the next level? Does he want to go to the highest level and try and win a championship? That's the question. So you got Hugh Freeze. uh, You got Lane Kiffin. Obviously, the Ole Miss head coach. Does he want to move over to Auburn? Does he want to go head-to-head with Nick Saban uh, on the recruiting trail? I don't think he's having to do that a whole lot right now at Ole Miss, but that's kind of the issue, right? At, at Ole Miss, I don't know that you can recruit to the level of a national title. I think you can at Auburn. It's been proven you can do that. Mark Stoops, is he interested in leaving Kentucky? The way that things are going with that program, it is tougher and tougher to build a consistent winner at Kentucky, especially when the rest of the league is doing what they're supposed to. Tennessee being back definitely makes it a little more difficult in the SEC East. Now, divisions will likely be gone eventually. But do you want to stay somewhere where uh, you are viewed as a basketball school? Is Auburn viewed as a basketball I doubt that they are, uh, but Bruce Pearl will tell you differently. So uh, as it sits right now, yeah, Auburn's a basketball school until they get this thing righted, and then they're going to be a football school again. They will always be a football school, so... Uh, Mark Stoops, though, you could do a lot worse. I mean, you know what his floor is, and that's definitely... Like, we know Kiffin's floor is losing seasons, right? We've seen it at FAU. Uh, What he's done at Ole Miss has absolutely been incredible. He is a great coach. But when it goes bad, it can go real bad. He had an 11-win season at FAU, then he had a 5-7, and and then he had another 11-win season. So, yeah. Things can go badly there. Mark Stoops, yeah, we've seen bad seasons, but it's almost a little more forgivable at Kentucky, but we haven't seen a bad season out of him in a long time. Uh, Kiffin, you know, we just talked about that. Freeze, Stoops, Kiffin, those are the top three. Matt Rule, I'm hearing, is really being talked about. Uh, It really depends on Cohen and, you know, what Matt Rule would do with his staff, et cetera. Uh, But I think you could obviously do worse. Urban Meyer, we got to throw it out there just, just because. I mean, if they want to toss out some crazy guaranteed contract like A&M has done with Jimbo, et cetera, you would think that these people would have learned from these contracts. We just talked about it a couple weeks ago. But something like that would certainly be interesting for Urban Meyer. Uh, but does he want to go up against Nick Saban again? Now, I know that Saban is not going to be around forever, uh, but this is somewhere that Urban Meyer could win. And you know he'd be a figurehead, he'd come in, he'd hire the right staff, he'd hire the guys, he would be the CEO. You know he's successful as a CEO, you know he's successful as a recruiter. So that's somebody to pay attention to. Dave Aranda at Baylor, we just got the Big 12 contract news. I'll probably talk about that on on the Tuesday show, uh, if we have a Tuesday show. we got to figure it all out. But uh, does Aranda look at that and say, "Mm, you know, $30 million here, or do I go to Auburn where they're going to be bringing in over $100 million? It it doesn't seem like Dave Aranda would be the kind of guy that would leave, but you never know. Jeff Grimes, his uh, his offensive line coach, offensive coordinator, uh, Grimes has ties to Auburn. He was the Auburn offensive line coach way back when. Um, maybe, uh, but I would imagine Auburn wants somebody that has head coaching experience, Power Five head coaching experience. Deion Sanders, I've told y'all before. Deion Sanders is not going to be the Auburn head coach because I don't believe that the boosters won't be involved. But I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Kevin Steele, that was who they wanted last time. I don't think that you can hire him now with what has gone on at Miami. But again, this is a school that hired Gene Chizik uh, coming off of a 5-19 and 19 campaign in two years at Iowa State. I mean, what do you do here? Bill O'Brien has been brought up. His name will be involved with every single coaching search, all of them, because CAA is pushing to get him out of Alabama. Uh, And then finally, the last one I'll talk about is Bill Clark. Bill Clark did wonderful things at UAB. He had back surgery, forced him into an early retirement. He has hinted that he wants back in the game. Auburn did talk to him before they hired Harson. This is a guy that knows the state of Alabama, understands Southeastern Conference football, even though he's been in the CUSA for a long time. I I would imagine, one, Bill Clark will either be back at UAB or he will be the Auburn coach. I don't have 
any idea. I'm not even going to make a prediction on this. My only prediction is I don't think that Hugh Freeze is the guy because I don't think John Cohen uh, likes Freeze. I think they're going to make Kiffin say no, and I don't know if he does. I, other than that, I got nothing. I don't think it'll be Deion, Deion Sanders. I don't think it's prime. So that's, uh, that's what I think. I don't think it'll be Hugh Freeze. I don't think it'll be Deion Sanders. Other than that, all up in the air. So who knows? Let's uh, let's hit a quick ad, and then I want to hit. I want to talk about John Cohen in just a second. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and Bet US TV has you covered every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. We've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff. Only on the Bet US TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right, so along with firing Brian Harson, Auburn has also brought in, um, they have a new athletic director, John Cohen from Mississippi State. Now, obviously, Cohen has been around the SEC for a very, very long time. He was a baseball coach at Florida, Kentucky, Mississippi State. Uh, he was there for a while at Mississippi State uh, before he became the athletic director there. He's been there for, I think, seven years. He was the one that hired Joe Moorhead. He hired Mike Leach, brought in two guys that... And not a ton of SEC experience, so does that lead to anything with the Auburn hire? Who knows? Uh, he gets $1.5 million per year. That's a $400,000 raise. And this is the interesting part to me, is he has assurances that he will operate his own athletic department. Now, are the Auburn boosters comfortable enough now with NIL, everything else, to step back and just help fund a program and allow this guy to run his own ship. They didn't let Alan Green do it. I don't know that they've let anybody do it in decades. So can they step back and allow that to happen? We'll see. So why did Cohen make this move? Like you would think all these schools are about the same, right? They're all in the SEC. Da, da, da. No, Auburn is a, a better job, and it all comes down to NIL, right? That's the biggest thing. Mississippi State has a certain amount of money, from their boosters, from their community, et cetera, that they will be able to get to push towards NIL. Auburn already has, I believe, like $13 million pledged for NIL, and these guys have understood how the game was played for a very long time. I think that's the nice way of saying it, right? Uh, they know how to do this. So, yeah, if you're getting assured that you were going to run your own athletic department and you basically have the funding that you need in order to field a championship-level roster, yeah, like John Cohen is stepping into a spot where you've got a really good basketball program, a pretty good baseball program, uh, a pretty good just overall athletics department. Like, if if these guys are all aligned at Auburn now, after the Harson and Allen Green situation, then yeah, it's a great spot to step into because you've proven that you can win a championship there. You've proven that you can recruit with the best of them. You've proven you can beat Alabama. You've proven that you can go to a Final Four in basketball. Like, all these different things have actually happened in the past decade and a half, right? Whatever it is, 15 years. This is all stuff that can happen. So, yeah, it's it's a little weird uh, that Cohen is leaving Mississippi State, especially the week of the game. I mean, <laughs> does, it get, does it get any more crazy than that? I mean, the Monday before, well, I guess this was announced on Sunday, the Cohen situation, uh, news started leaking on Saturday, gets out a little more on Sunday, Monday, it's official, like all this different mess, it's it's crazy. Uh, as far as Mississippi State, who is going to be the next athletic director, State is really good at this. 
right? Their their board of trustees, their boosters, if you will, know how to pick these guys because they keep getting plucked. There's been numerous ones, right? Scott Strickland is now at Florida. Uh, John Cohen is at Auburn. Um, Greg Byrne was at Mississippi State. He went to Arizona for a bit. Now he's at Alabama. I mean, it, all their guys keep getting plucked. The guy for Mississippi State, uh, I'm looking at it now. Michael Alford from Florida State is a candidate. Georgia Southern AD Jared Binko. Um, he has Mississippi State ties. Mississippi State Deputy AD Eric George. Uh, the interim guy, I forget his name right now. Good gracious. Completely went blank on it. Um, Eastern Michigan AD uh, Scott Weatherby. That's another one that does have ties to Mississippi State. San Diego State AD John David Wicker. Uh, these are all guys that could fit the bill. And we'll see what happens. Um, all of these would, I mean, it would be a step up for all of them. For sure. Uh, you're not going and plucking somebody from you know, another SEC school, I wouldn't imagine, unless it's a deputy AD. But these are all names to pay attention to as we go forward. But yeah, $13 million pledged for NIL. Uh, John Cohen, by the way, was at Mississippi State when all the Hugh Freeze stuff was going on uh, at Ole Miss, right? It just a, a complete mess. So that is one of the reasons why I don't believe that Hugh Freeze will be the head coach at Auburn is I don't think they have a very good relationship. Now, it would be nuts to see that happen. Right, you know that Mississippi State fans would be very irate about that. They're already irritated at the fact that he left, but now you get this going on. Uh, this is going to be interesting going into the future. I will tell you that. I, I'm I'm very curious to see what ends up happening with the rest of this. So we're going to get out of here. We went uh, 17 minutes on Auburn. <sighs> going to do another show on Tuesday, I would imagine, probably Tuesday night. After the rankings are revealed, that is my guess. That is my guess. Tune in to the BetUS College Football Show. Of course, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday and Wednesday. Got several picks this week. We're going to be discussing all the big games. Of course, Alabama and LSU, Tennessee, Georgia, etc. Make sure you're tuned in and subscribed. If you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys again next time, next day, tomorrow. Good gracious, tomorrow. All right. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Hopefully, all your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.